Hello, welcome to my channel, Small Optics. My name is Jason. Now, I've done a couple of videos on collimation in the past, and um, I've always said that I don't like using these things, laser collimators, and I've never really said why. Um, and I did say I'd make a video about it one day, so <laughs> here it is. Um, well, there's, there's three main reasons, really, why I don't like using these. Um, well, four, actually, if you count the first one. They're not very beginner friendly, as far as I'm concerned. Um, you've got enough on your plate as a beginner if you've bought one of these type of telescopes, a Newtonian reflector, and you know that they need collimator and you've heard all these horror stories and the rest of it. You more than likely have heard that you need to get one of these. Simply not true, folks. You don't need to get one of these. And if you, after watching this video, you probably won't get one of these. Now, before I go any, any, any further, I, I just want to um, make one thing clear. This is just my opinion, okay? Um, I, I, and an awareness video, if you like. Something to be aware of when you do get one of these things or if you think about buying one of these. Because, don't get me wrong, you know, literally hundreds, probably thousands of people use them. Um, but the people that usually use them have a certain things that come into play that I'll, I'll, I'll um, that, that make using these uh, more reliable, which I'll get into in, in, a, in a short while. So going back to about being not, not very beginner friendly, um, you've got enough on your plate with collimation and, and, and worrying about collimation. And the first thing you're going to learn about these things is that they need collimating. Okay, don't expect that when you get one of these fresh from the shop that it's going to be collimated because more than likely it won't be. When I got this one, I mean, it, it was out a mile. Okay, now, so straight away, you know, you've not only now got to worry about collimating your, your telescope, you've now got to worry about collimating this thing. Um, and I would rather collimate a thousand newtonian type telescopes then collimate one of these things they are a nightmare <laughs> now i don't know if it's just me out of all the ones i've used making hard work out of it or, or, or what but they are a nightmare i mean you're talking a good hour <laughs> before you get anywhere close for these to be collimated on paper it's pretty it sounds easy you put them in some kind of a jig it's usually like a fork Oops, i better do it that way around not that way around it's usually like a fork like that that you put it in to keep the um the, the collimator stable and then you draw a dot a across the room okay uh, or, or should I say, where the dot lines uh, hits the wall on the other side of the room, you draw a dot there, okay? You put a piece of paper on the wall, if you like. And then what you would do in, while it's in this jig is turn the collimator around. And what should happen is the dot should stay on the dot that you've drawn. If it orbits around it, that means your collimator needs collimating. And then you have to fiddle about with it. And when I say fiddle about with it, <laughs> it's ridiculous. So... They need collimating. The next and probably the most valid reason why I don't like these is I simply don't trust them. Okay, because what I'll do now, um, and it's all down to these type of telescopes, or sorry, these type of focuses. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to spin the camera around and I'm going to place this into the... Uh, the telescope tube and show you exactly what I mean by this stage um, why I just don't trust them okay here you go now that you can see moving at the bottom that's me you can see my hand <laughs> now you can see now what I've done is you can just see the laser up here okay all right sticking in there and and it's it's in there and, he, and he's showing actually that it's slightly out don't uh, go on that because I know for a fact this laser is not 100% collimated. Now, this is what I mean about um, not trusting them at all in these type of focuses. Now, if your focuser has these tightening uh, thumb screws on them, 
okay watch what happens um i can't turn the dot up too much if i stand in front of it and make it a bit darker you might see if I put my hand there that's better isn't it now watch what happens when i tighten it up okay i can actually collimate it with these tightening screws now that's not good right so the, the, look I'll, I'll do this one can you see it moving it's actually moving. Now the thing is we, we collimation. Uh, look, look. Can you see how that's moving out now? A little bit tighter. And it's moving in. Now what are, my point is to this. Is that every time you take this in and out. And put it back in. It's never. You're never going to tighten it in the same place. Every single time. Okay. Let me show you that again. I'm trying to get the right light for you to show you. Um, there we go. Can you see it moving? Look at that. Now that's moving it with the with the tightening. So if you tighten it up that much first time round, okay, and then you check it again, and you've only tightened it up that much the next time round, it's out. So there's no way you can trust this sitting in now the problem where the problem lies is this okay well if i just move the camera up is this this wobble all right now it has to have play it has to have a bit of wobble because otherwise it wouldn't be able to fit inside but the problem is what happens is even if you were to really carefully make sure these are even as you as you tighten them up it's still going to be pushing the laser over to one side no matter what so no matter what it's always going to be not central in the tube okay be purely because of how these clamp down and it's no good risking oh well i'll just drop it in loose because dropping it in loose again you can never guarantee that it's going to be in right um so as you can see if i just drop that down again so as you can see this is my problem with laser collimators all right so let's put it down so you can see it there you go and as you can see we can actually move the dot with the um with the uh, thumb screws it's, that's not good. That's that's not good. The thing is, with laser collimation, they're supposed to, supposed to give you precise collimation. How can you possibly get precise collimation in uh, when you've got this much play and this much movement? Uh, now there is a way around with this, and I'll explain how you get around it. <laughs> so do you see where I'm coming from. This is why I do not trust them. Not only have you got to worry about, is it in collimation? Yeah, then you've got to worry about, well, is it square in the focuser? It's too much trouble to, 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 be, to, to be messing about with, to be honest. Now, there is a slight dodge to this. Now, what you can do is you can do what's called shim your focuser with something like as uh, simple as um, a drinks can. <clears throat> soda can whatever you want to call it can of coke whatever all right beer can cut just cut a little strip um i haven't really got anything to demonstrate really uh but you'll know what i mean there we go i've got a microfiber cloth imagine this is um imagine this is a piece of tin all right tin plate uh, steel or whatever a tin can's made of you cut a strip like that and then just using something like double-sided tape um, so it doesn't have to be permanent and double-sided tape holds things on you know perfectly fine uh, just in case you're not happy with it and then you can you just put a shim around it all right just one layer of, of uh, like tin can uh, drinks can that sort of stuff and this will then fit a lot more snug into the focusing tube uh, and and will take away a lot of that play so you can totally have a way with the china with the thumb screws but there's still a butt to that it, you know it's there's still movement there even when you shiv it and you still have to be uh, concerned about it being in collimation all the time so that's two things you've got to be collimating is enough with one you know um 
Now, the other thing, the, the, the other way, or not so much the other way, but the type of focuses, let's start this way. The type of focus where these are perfectly fine for is what's called compression ring focuses. Now, I'll flash a picture up on there. Now, if your telescope already has one of these, you're fine, all right? You've still got to be faffing about with collimating it. And uh, don't think that these 400 pound laser collimators don't need collimating too, because they do, all right? You know, these, well, they might not be as much as 400 pound, but you know what I mean? They, they, I've, I'll flash a few pictures up, really top of the range things. They still need collimating. It's too much faffing, guys. I, it's, honestly, I think laser collimators are trying to reinvent the wheel. You know, we've been collimating telescopes, Newtonian telescopes, since Newtonian's times. And there were, certainly weren't no lasers back then. <laughs> so, uh, they just... And that's the thing. The more trouble than the worth. Now, you all know my... Um, my old go-to favourite, if, you, if you're uh, familiar with my channel. And that is... A collimation cap. Now the thing is with these, they don't need collimating. Um, they cost well free, basically. You've got the materials kicking around, as opposed to 20, 30, 40, 50, 100 pound or whatever how much you're gonna cost pay you for one of these. Um, and they're not going to blind you. Okay, this is another thing that's that's really baffles me with laser collimators. You Bouncing a laser beam off mirrors. Mirrors and laser beams don't usually, are not really a good um, uh, uh, combo, especially when you're sticking your head down the tube and there's a laser beam bouncing back up straight in your eye. Oh, the, I could go on, folks. <laughs> I don't like using these things. So it's up to you guys. Um, oh, and one more thing. We have put this to the test and uh, somebody who commented, put in the comments where I'm on about this, said they'd done the same thing um, by collimating a telescope with a collimation cap and then testing it with a laser. And it was absolutely spot on. You know, there was, <laughs> there was no difference whatsoever. So if you want to faff about collimating one of these and then trusting it and putting shims around something when you can just get a cap for one of these, make it up in a couple of minutes. <laughs> You've got it for a lifetime. You can drop it. You can get it wet. You can do anything you want. And it's always going to be trustworthy. And that's the main thing. You can trust a collimation cap. You can't trust one of these things. Anyway, guys, I'll leave it with you and uh, let you be the judge of it. But you've got to remember, this is my opinion. Um, like I say, hundreds, if not thousands of people use these, swear by these. But to be honest, be in my time, I've seen more damage done using one of these. I don't mean permanent damage. I mean, just a mess of a collimation attempt. Using one of these, then than anything you know um than any other collimation method i've seen over my time uh people can get themselves in a the right handle with these so if you don't know how to use a collimation cap or haven't happened to see my video on how to um um collimate a telescope with one of these i'll leave a link as always um in, in the description to any videos there like that so uh the only thing I use this for is to play with cats that come into my garden. <laughs> like that tease cats, obviously avoiding not to get it in their eyes, like, but you know, like you do, that little dot. <laughs> That's the only fun I get of one of these. <laughs> well, folks, there we go. There's my opinion and uh, my thoughts on laser collimation. Uh, thank you so much for watching. If you've watched this far, don't forget, like, subscribe, all the rest of it. And if you do buy one of these things, just be careful with them and don't forget to turn them off. That's one thing. You don't even have to put batteries in one of these. <laughs> Till the next time, guys. See you on the next one. Bye for now.